there's two new sets. I, I'm sorry, there are now two sets of variable processing um, uh, kind of uh, periods, functions. So a lot of us, if you're experienced with advanced theming, a lot of us are, uh, know about the pre-process functions. Pre-process functions allow you to affect things with code before they're even sent to the display, before they're even sent to render. So you can really tweak variable, tweak some markup. Now there is a process function, uh, or I'm sorry, a process stream of functions that actually fire after the pre-process functions have, ha uh, have gone off. So if you're maybe running a pre-process tweak to a module you downloaded and you see that the module keeps doing what you, know, you don't want it to do, you now have a second phase that you can step in and say, okay, fine, after pre-process, I want you to change that variable to be X, Y, Z. And that's a whole other area in the, in the theme layer now that we get a chance to do that. Templates have a variable for CSS classes now called classes underscore array. And uh, to show that off, I have this little snippet uh, that I got from Drupal.org. And basically, if we see this variable, bars, classes, array. And since it's an array, I can add to it. So I'm adding a new class to this template, whatever it is, uh, called new hyphen class hyphen to hyphen add. Not really fancy, but I want to get the picture across. What that's going to do is now in my node template file, instead of having all these crazy classes in the templates, uh, how many, how many edit no template files. How many tweak the template file? Okay, so some of you might remember this offhand, but I mean, there was like class equals node, space, node hyphen, and the node ID. I mean, there were all these individual classes that would appear in the template. Now they actually just get compressed to a variable called classes uh, built from this classes array. So what it is, it's, it's for cleanliness for, of code. We don't have to go in and manually add these classes anymore. Now, through code, we can register away from the template, hey, uh, by the way, when you reach that node template, I want you to add these other classes to the string um, before we have to go in and literally add them by hand sometimes, and that was a real big pain in the butt. See, I said butt instead of ass. <laughs> good thing you didn't say yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> Theo's cool, he says he's got it. It's all good. <laughs> Um, so, uh, all templates can now print out dynamic attributes. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, uh, this is really kind of uh, geeky theme layer stuff. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, when you have an HTML tag, like a div tag, uh, you have the ID attribute of the div, the class attribute, and then you have anything else that you might, you know, appear in the div. Well, now we can, uh, through code, collectively add different attributes. By default, though, the templates have to have ID and class established. Remember the slide before? We had the classes array. That's why you have to have the class established in the template, but any other attribute for a tag, whatever it be, you can basically just push it right through the attributes variable. And then, of course, if it's specifically to the content or the title, they have their own attributes array. Um, if this sounds a little too geeky for you, don't worry about it. You'll get used to it uh, when you start with the number seven. Um, process functions can now be used for all theming hooks. There were certain functions in Drupal's theme layer that could only really affect, like adding variables, would only affect templates directly. So that was kind of like a, you know, kind of a downer sometimes, because you're like, oh, I want I to tweak the variables, but I don't have a template at all. I have everything running via code through template PHP. Now in Drupal 7, we get to do all those tweaks to even variables, even if we don't have a single template inside of our theme, if it's all PHP logic based, okay? Uh, new theme functions now take a single argument, so every, uh, you know, um, theme underscore table, theme underscore link, theme underscore block, all that stuff, now every function, every theme function has just one argument coming in called variables. So now that means things are a little bit more complex when it dives into the logic for a theme function, but from a programmer standpoint, this is actually much better because now I don't have to go and look up the signature for every theme uh, function that I'm overwriting. I know it's immediately just variables, and then of course as a developer I get to dig in and find out what those variables are. Um, before, I mean, if it was like the title and uh, the content, it would literally be you know, uh, an argument for each variable that came in. And that doesn't work when you're trying to scale out. Uh, if Drupal 7 wanted to add one whole new layer of complexity to the tables, the way tables are themed by default, and the way people overwrite it, 
uh, we basically lock ourselves in if we have multiple arguments. By running to this method of just one argument called variables, now Drupal 7 gets to not so much as get enhanced features, but the API gets to grow and we don't have to wait for a whole new major version to come out. Uh, your function names must match the theme name. No more PHP template underscore blog. That's no longer allowed in your template PHP files. You have to have the prefix of your theme name. Okay? Uh, CSS and JavaScript, now you must specify them in the .info file. I didn't see, there was like an issue for this, uh, so I didn't get to read all the details because the issue was kind of long, um, and I need to drive out here and it takes a while. But um, basically, no more automatic style.css file automatically assumed by Drupal in your theme, and no more automatic script.js file automatically assumed for your theme as well. Uh, if you didn't know, these two files were looked for by Drupal, and Drupal just would assume you would have a style.css file um, if you had no style sheets declared in your theme. So technically now a theme can have no style sheets and it won't try to load an empty file. Drupal does pretty good about not loading an empty file when it's a style sheet or a JavaScript. Did I see a question, a hand raised? No? Okay. Yes, so the question was, what if I have style.css in my theme, you will just have to deliberately declare style.css. You wouldn't just let Drupal go out and assume and look at the file. But would I have to declare the includes from style.css? Uh, if you're using like at import yeah, in CSS, if, I, if you're using at import, you shouldn't have to do anything. But if you want Drupal to know, see it's another good thing too, if Drupal knows about every style sheet in your manifest file, Drupal can take that and compress it together with the performance features built in. So you will want to make sure that you declare them out anyway. But if you have CSS doing some at imports and looking up other CSS files, uh, I mean, that's just standard CSS. That's going to work just fine. Uh, more granular rendering of node and user templates. So now we have a couple, two new functions uh, in PHP, hide and render. So we can literally hide little components of a page and not have to kind of delete them with code, okay? Um, the hide will manage that just fine. And in fact, you could hide, 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 render, render, render. So, I mean, you could hide something previously and then render it later. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but maybe you do. So, so it show up in some other place. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to hide it from the general content well and then render that little piece, you know, comments, maybe in a sidebar, this is what will let you do that, okay? Um, Carrie mentioned that RDFA is part of Drupal 7. If you don't know what that is, just imagine it makes your website really, 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 really geeky for search <laughs> engines. For, 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 yeah, I mean, you know, basically what happens is, and I'm gonna get geeky right now, if I had a Drupal website based on Planet of the Apes, I could use the RDFA feature to make my whole website kind of like a giant database repository, if you will, or almost like a giant web service. And people can query my website using RDFA protocols, uh, and I can actually respond to them and give them information right from my website. And it really doesn't look too much different from HTML. So this is pretty geeky stuff. Uh, government sites are using this. Um, so you can actually query like some census databases and stuff like that. If you at all care about doing mashups, RDFA, there's a good video from DrupalCon Boston, which is already now two years old, that shows how to do a maps mashup uh, with Drupal 7's RDF uh, uh, modules. So, it, I mean, it was like a mashup done in like six minutes. Uh, and it did plotting of a Google map with the attendance people uh, against a chart. Um, you know, of where they came from. It was pretty neat, and again, it was like six minutes, whole mashup, uh, RDFA, really does a lot of that stuff. What does RDF stand for? Uh, resource definition resource framework? description framework. Okay, resource description framework, type A. That's kind of important, it's kind of weird. Because um, then there's RDF that's just uh, kind of considered a big brother to RSS. Weird stuff like that. So anyway, um, if your theme wants to take advantage of RDFA and I definitely predict a lot of themes are going to go this way because it's a very simple change uh, in your page template files. But there's a few things key in here that as 
kind of slimmed down from the standard page TPL that we know today in Drupal 6. Uh, one of the key things that need to change is the doc type. It actually mentions that it's RDFA, and then the DDT mentions RDFA. The languages, some of this stuff, these variables have been trimmed down. Um, I don't remember all of them. I don't even know what Girdle is. So I'll have to go look that up later. Is that in the start? Is that in the start? The you know, I haven't, I haven't double checked. I, I didn't notice myself, but I'm going to look. So the question was, is this change uh, done in the start theme? I'm going to go out on a limb and assume yes. You know, But we've got geeks and laptops, so somebody let me know tonight. So um, I'm done for tonight, part one again. These are the links that I would like to share with you. So drupal.org slash update slash theme slash six slash seven. This, I know it sucks, but whatever. Uh, this first link is actually the upgrade path documentation from taking your Drupal 6 theme to Drupal 7. Uh, a lot of the points I covered here are literally on that page. Um, there's even some code samples showing six to seven. So I would definitely keep you know, your RSS feeds looking at that page for sure. Um, also, if you're just getting into Drupal themes, uh, this tiny URL link actually jumps to my linden.com training, so you can check that out. And then uh, if anybody uses Dreamweaver or Eclipse, I have some free Drupal plugins for those uh, softwares available at Extendus. Question? Yes. If uh, Stark is based on Zen, is the Zen project continuing and what's the difference? Very good question. Um, so if the Stark project is based on Zen, what's happening in Zen? Zen, since Stark is already kind of slated in the core, the, the code's in there now, there's kind of like a feature freeze. So anything that the developers that help start want to add, they will be contributing back to Zen. So Zen already does have a seven development branch, and they will be continuing Zen on. You'll see theme frameworks come out for seven, like Fusion, uh, Grid960, everybody is looking to do a D7 version of that stuff. So Zen will still be a very viable option, 